Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at the specific case of projectile motion where objects are projected vertically upwards. So let's get started. It says here that when an object is launched vertically upwards, again, gravity will be acting against it, causing it to fall to the ground. There is no horizontal motion involved. So this should be common sense that if you take an object and throw it upwards, it's going to only travel vertically and that gravity is going to be acting on it. So here's a picture of somebody launching an object vertically upwards at 8.3 meters per second. And just to help you visualize this a bit more, here's an animation. We actually looked at this animation as well when we did motion time graphs. So if I click play here, you'll see the object moving up and moving back down. And remember, we get a velocity time graph that looks like this, where the y-axis is actually vertical velocity against time, because remember, there's no horizontal motion involved here. And this part from C to D, remember, is just the object hitting the ground. There's a few things we need to be aware of when we're doing questions involving objects being launched vertically upwards. So the first thing is that choosing upwards to be positive and downwards to be negative, acceleration due to gravity will always be negative, where A is minus 9.8 meters per second squared. This is what we saw for an object dropped from rest, and it makes sense here. It's also the case that the object will be launched with an initial velocity u that is non-zero, but its velocity when it reaches its maximum height will be zero meters per second. So if we look at the picture, the initial vertical velocity u will be 8.3 meters per second because it's always got to be non-zero for an object launched vertically upwards. And then at the highest point in its motion before it starts traveling back down the way, it's going to have reached zero meters per second. So for this type of motion, it often helps to analyze half the motion of the full projectile because we know that at halfway, its final vertical velocity v will have reached zero meters per second. So we would have u equals 8.3 and v equals 0 in this case. And then we can use this last point to analyse the second half of the motion. So it says if the object is allowed to return to its original height, the upwards motion will exactly mirror the downwards motion and the time of flight upwards will be the same downwards. So that's very useful if we're doing problems on this because we can use the fact that this motion down to here is going to be the identical to the motion from here to here for the first half of its motion. So we could use the idea that the time for the first half of the motion is going to be the same as the time for the second half of the motion, assuming the object is going to reach the same point that it left from. So that would be this point here in this example. That's all from me folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give it one of these and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.